The Monday Night Lights podcast is back. Brian Piercy here, along with Crunk and Turtle Tim. How are you boys doing today? Hola, hola. Doing well. How are you? Doing well. What about you, Crunk? I am doing great. Get a little bit closer to that microphone as well. On it. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Uh, Kyle Bauer, if you're alive, please let us know. Uh, you're supposed to be here tonight and tried calling your phone, but it went straight to voicemail, so hopefully everything's okay. But uh, What number should he call to let us know? Uh, call the Whoop line. Oh. 71475-WHOOP. So, uh, yeah. So, another week. Thank you, Mr. Turtle. You were talking about coming in. Crunk uh, had to call uh, Mrs. Sammy. Sammy Sweetheart yeah, he tricked called, you into getting here. Called Sammy Bear, pulled in a pulled in a big favor. She's listening right now, so let's uh, let's give her some shout out. Shout out to all the MNL ladies for putting up with uh, stinky hockey bags and all that stuff. Yes, shout out to all the ladies and Sam. Thank you for allowing Tim out of the house tonight. I know that you just said that I owe you a vacation, so we will coordinate that. Pull that out of the MNL funds. We, we uh, yeah, we can do that. You never know what panty can uh, subscribe on Amazon. Pay subscribe. for the the Sammy Bear vacation. Yep, yep, yep. As always, give us a call seven one four seven five whoop. Email the podcast at podcast at mnlhl dot com. Follow, subscribe to us on Twitch. We have a lot of you guys who actually uh, subscribed your month that it ended and you haven't resubscribed again. So if you got some time, go over there, do that. Interested in coming up on the podcast? Let us know. We'll figure out a date for you. Um, I believe next week sounds like Proctor's Charles Mackey's coming in for a little Christmas Eve special. We're going to oh, have some nice. brunch, some breakfast. A lot of cats. Uh, this is a cat-free house, so uh, nice. animal-free house. Uh, otherwise, hey. There he is. It's all good. Here I am. It's all good, all good, all good. So uh, let's move on to some news and some rumors. Uh, sounds like we had a nice turnout at the bowling alley last night trying to look for that sponsorship. Any of you boys able to make it last night? Uh, no, I did not make it. Did not make it. I did not make it last night. Uh, my first time was two weeks ago, and I'm a big fan. The uh, mozzarella pizza roll things, health and wellness. <laughs> yeah, I mean, their their food isn't bad. It's kind of, it's not that bad of a setup. I'd say there was a picture on Slack uh, from last night. It actually made it look nicer than it is, but it's kind of that old 70s style, you know, kind of bar. It looks like you wouldn't be surprised if it was down in Detroit and people are still smoking in it. But it's overall, I think it's a pretty good time. Yeah, the only time I've ever even been there was when I think we had an award show. Is that the same place? That is the same yeah, place. Yeah, that was a good setup. Yeah, I mean, can't complain about that. If they are willing, you know, we're there a lot anyways. I think Trent's right by there. He lives there. The worms go there a lot of times on Fridays. A lot of people are hanging out there anyways. If we get some money... You know, to help the league lower those costs, it's a win-win situation for everybody. Did the manager show up last night? I think I believe I heard. I heard that they did show up. So those are the rumors on the street. I can't that was confirm or deny that. The least commitment I've ever heard. I think I might maybe have heard that they might have been there. And the only reason I say that is the best part of my night that night was when I was leaving. I see Panny leaning over the counter like he's trying to return like bowling shoes, but I know he's not doing that. He's patiently waiting for the manager to show up who never shows. <laughs> yeah, it's it sounded like they were. Like I said, it sounded like we had a pretty good turnout. I wasn't in the best of moods after last night. We'll get to that a little bit later. So I kind of skipped out on the bar. I had to get to work at 730 this morning. So... Hopefully that'll uh, pan out and we'll get there. Uh, next thing on the agenda, the trade deadline was yesterday at 4 o'clock. No deals were made. I'm going to start with Crunk on this one. Any surprise, no deals were made? A little bit. I think so. 
I think we were all expecting it and all waiting for Zeke to hit the Twitter and let us know something was happening, but nothing happened. You weren't waiting for the trusted voice? Zeke seems to be more in the know lately. That that hurts. That hurts. Now, Turtle, on the other hand, is being part of the ivory tower. I'm assuming you weren't really expecting much. Well, let's just say that I have a username and password for the ivory tower, um, but I, I get all my information secondhand from text from the Auto Brothers and, and Busta. Busta's very controlling, doesn't let, really allow me to do anything, so I stay out of there from a team chemistry perspective, not due to the fact that I just can't keep up with the amount of chatter in there. So I actually don't even know who Zeke Rollins is. If anybody out there <laughs> wants to fill me in, or if that's just an inside joke, um, maybe there's some non-slackers, podcasters that have the same question. I'm actually asking for a friend. Yeah, I I assume I know who it is, but technically <laughs> I don't know for sure. Okay, um, good. So... Uh, yeah, I mean, were the Ducks, were you guys trying to make many moves? Were you happy with the team? What were your guys' thought going into this last weekend of the trade deadline? Yeah, so I've been a GM for, what, three years now, and I'm notorious for heavy, heavy trade, happy, like, let's move some things around. Obviously, the Ducks are not where we want to be. Um, so this year was actually pretty quiet. We were taking calls, um, a lot of interest in me. And I just told him I'm, I'm loyal. I'm not going anywhere. That so was we, definitely self-generated. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to so, say, that sounds like a total uh, 180 by you because in the past couple of years, it sounded like you were consistently trying to move yourself. I was. I was. I was always interested in the first GM trade. But I, I got to be honest with you, I love the, the Ducks this year. We have such a good locker room. I, I couldn't I couldn't leave. And your uniform is the best it's been all, all in the, your guys' career. Yeah, it's definitely top three. I'm, I'm a fan of the orange. Top three out of three. So, so yep. apparently Turtle doesn't like it is what he's trying no, to I say. No, I love it. I love all three of them. Now, Krunk, now I assume you didn't think you were going to be traded, but you were recently traded in the last couple of weeks. Let's hear it from your standpoint of how that went down and what were your feelings. So it went down as I was answering emails in my newly minted home office, and I get a text from Ty that says, Yo. And I uh, respond with... Does Ty normally uh, te- communicate with you during the week? This was definitely the first time out of the blue that uh, Ty Otto ever uh, ever texted me. So he texts me, yo, and then I uh, respond with hello and immediately get a phone call. And it's a... It's not, remember, if you have anyone seen the movie Moneyball, the first time that like Jonah Hill's character tries to like trade the guy? Yeah. That's what it, it sounded like. <laughs> and if goes, you're okay with it, we're, um, um, uh, we, we don't want to yeah, do this. I hate but. doing this, man. I really, you know, but to, tr- you know, Troy just started going crazy and then <laughs> Troy made, like, he made the trade. Now, like, Troy is like forcing this. And so, you know, and then I, he says, you got traded to the Tigers. And you're like, oh, Matt Taylor, I, I think I can handle that one. I definitely uh, like my new home. Uh, I miss uh, some of my North Star brothers, uh, from or former brothers, but my uh, new North Star home, my new Tiger home, it's a, uh, it's a good locker room. It's a good place to be. We're having fun. Yeah, that's good to hear. I mean, yeah, I, you know, having Serta as your GM, you know, hearing he's, you know, a venture capitalist or whatever it is, you know, you only, you keep hearing, we're not making any moves, anything like that, but do you 100% trust that until the trade deadline ends? Uh, he, you know, those type of companies, at least in my opinion, they're all about finding that value, trying to get to the bottom line, what's best for the company overall. So I kind of always figured that was the same for the whalers. I don't know how that actually works on the back end or not, but you know, now we're whalers to the end. So we're going to move forward on our side as well. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm excited to see how that moves forward. I could tell last night in the parking lot, there was a few people with some long faces that were probably wishing they were traded. Um, but maybe we'll get into that a little bit later. I don't want to steal any of your agenda. Oh, yeah. We'll definitely get to that kind of when we recap some of the games. Uh, next thing is our announcement. So um, obviously next week we had the All-Star game followed also with the Bender Bowl and the All-Star of Tomorrow game. Uh, we'll get into the draft for the All-Stars a little bit later. But the following week, we actually have the m l Skills Competition. Um, so we got a little bit of information on this one as well. So there's going to be two tiers. There's going to be a Bender tier and an All-Star tier. It's going to be based on where you were actually drafted. So your Bender tier is going to be between round 6 and 10. 
your all-star tier is going to be between one and five. If you're actually interested in competing or competing in any of these events, email Jeremy Drager or send him a message in Slack to know. Uh, events are subject to cancellation based on low numbers, but the events are going to be a shootout style uh, competition, a shootout goalie competition. So I don't know if style is like one of those dumb NHL ones where you put on hats and, you know, try to act like you're playing soccer or something. I yeah. assume that's what that might mean. Eh, fastest skater. Fastest goalie, hardest shot, which I'm very interested if maybe Officer Riley's going to bring in a speed gun for that. Yeah, I'd, I've heard rumors that people were going to, I thought Ty said he had one. I would be interested to see if we could have uh, tested that out. Maybe next week we can bring one and try it out in warm ups just to have the, the shootout or the uh, slap shot live up to the hype and it actually work. Yeah, there'll be a stick handling course, an accuracy challenge, and then there's going to be a team relay that's not going to be all-star or bender it's going to be a full thing and what that's going to be made up of of you need four skaters and one goalie uh for your four skaters they have to add up to over 26 so each round essentially is a point so your four skaters have to go above 26 for your point level on that so that should be a fun event as well uh crunk any of those pique your interest in something that you'd want to be involved in I mean, obviously, the uh, stick handling competition is the one that I'm going to dominate. So um, I like the fastest skater one. I think that would be I'd like to see if uh, they have the benders, you know, version of fastest skater. I'd like to uh, give that one a roll. Turtle, anything that's uh, piquing your interest? No, I do have a question, though. Are, are we going to be broadcasting that? <sighs> um, I mean, because there's plenty of chirping that. Everybody needs to hear. Are you looking to announce that capit or that? Stream? Well, you've got the equipment. If if I can get these headphones and microphone, I'll, I'd be happy to do it because I can't imagine that I'll be nominated. Let's see. I think Speed. it's if you want to volunteer. And oh in no, 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 no! I'm I'm all set. Yeah, I, I think for me, fastest skater would be fun. Hopefully, if my ankles doing better, it's slowly been getting better. I think my top speed's pretty much where it needs to be. I don't know if my acceleration is quite there as of yet, but. Considering that I've ran down sugar a couple of times, you know, oh, I yeah. might be. He able... was talking about it in the locker room. I'm he was sure saying, he was. He's like, dude, Piercy's looking fast. I, I know. know. The Proctor Stopper and can chase down sugar. It's a big just, resume. You better win. Uh, you know, I, I almost cho- uh, chased down Fister as well, but then I fell on my ass and gave myself a concussion going into the board. So <laughs> you never know there. Uh, I think hardest shot would just be fun if there's actually a speed gun just to see what it is. I'm sure, you know, if I top 20 miles an hour, I'd be happy, but. Actually, I don't know if that's fast or not for a shot. I have no idea. So, so I honestly, I want to go back to the last thing. I would like to add a category of bender stopping challenge, like just benders going full on speed, and then they all have to stop left on the red line and just style points. I want to see who can actually do it, who doesn't fall over. I can't go left. <laughs> like Luis Mendoza <laughs> style. Like we'll like put a pyramid of beer cans on the center and just can't knock it over. I was going to say, you actually have to look at each person individually and know what they're like, what handed they are, what sure, footed they sure. are. Because me, I'm left-handed and that's, I actually stopped my left foot. I can't stop my right foot with nothing. There so you go. That competition, I can There's a little uh, insight for the playoffs. You guys are welcome. Piercy can't stop right. Oh, that's, that's been uh, in the scouting report for years. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, like I said, I think an official email is actually coming out uh, tomorrow by Drager, followed by probably an announcement in the announcements channel. Anybody interested in any of those, I think it'll be a good time. Uh, you know, let Panny know. We'll sign you up for some competitions, and we'll have a good time there. So, Not that there's any rules to it, but can we nominate people that we think we want to see in it? Um, I will allow that. I mean, the worst case that's going to happen you. is someone says no. Or Drager says, no, you can't, but what's he going to do if you really email him back? I love it. I love it, too. You call their significant other and tell them to come on over. (laughs) (laughs) Works 100% of the time. (laughs) Apparently it does. Uh, Looks like Drager did say, yes, 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 yes. I don't know. uh, Of course, it looks like there was something about uh, Ty er, Ty talking about J.J. Beans going to be the popular guy that day. I don't know what they're talking about there. Uh, Pick them standings. Uh, currently Dylan's still in the lead with 35 points. He's got a four point lead over Troy. Uh, there is some controversy right now in these standings. Hedis didn't send in his picks last night. He claimed that they got stuck in a scent box, but when I asked him for a copy of them, he said he deleted the actual outgoing message as well. So there's zero record 
of his uh, outgoing message, and he still wants credit for it. So I guess asking the people in the chat, also probably to Troy in the future, since he's the sponsor of this competition, should we allow those picks to count for Chettis or not? He claims he got two out of three right. Would you let those count, Crunk? When is the last time anybody has ever deleted an outgoing message? I'm going to say that doesn't count. No. Technology doesn't lie. That's a zero. That's that's kind of where I'm at for it, but I just want to throw it out there. He was sending me some messages, trying to be like, can I get some credit? And I was just like, we've made some exceptions before. With, I think Proctor once and maybe one other person where they were like, it got stuck in my sent folder. Here's it, Here it is. It shows a timestamp of when I did it, when it was waiting, and we decided to let those count. But when you have zero evidence at all, like at least like open up your Gmail, press F12, and fudge a little bit of yeah, HTML forge with the date. I mean, but nope. Where's he at in the standings? Um, he's right. So right there, we are showing. I think he's about seven or eight right oh, now. Oh, so I'd give him the points. So he's like the ducks. Oh my goodness! Oh, so happy don't I don't. Hedis is higher than ducks when you consider how many people are in their uh, total. It looks like Dave Pease is hanging bullshit. Makes no sense. It looks like the crowd right now is saying no collusion. I think right now it's sounding like Hedis is not going to get those points. Luckily, just remember, people, that. Your lowest week does get thrown out, so hopefully he doesn't have another zero and he'll make up some of those points. Check that Wi-Fi. Yeah, exactly. So let's move on to some of the games real quick. So the first game of the night was the North Stars versus the Nordiques. It was a 2-1 win for the North Stars. Unfortunately, I thought Hedis was going to be there, so we'd have someone to kind of cover this game. Uh, did any of you guys get to see this game much? I saw a little bit of it. Yeah, I wasn't. I went on the uh, NHL ice and hopped on for a free sticks and pucks, so I actually did not get to watch any of it. Why don't you give us a quick breakdown of what you saw, Crunk? Uh, my most memorable moment of that game was uh, actually an out of body experience because I saw a much faster, much more agile, much better athlete, you? much better hockey player flying down the ice, going around two guys and uh, roofing one, and I was like. That's what I look like out there, and then I realized that it's Doc Hollywood, and but he was wearing, uh, wearing jersey. my old jersey from where <laughs> I got traded. So that's really the. It looked like an even game up until that point. I saw maybe ten minutes of it or so, and then I saw that play, and uh, then I went and got changed. Um, but it, it, that's it looked even until that one play. Yeah, I I got to see a little bit of this game from what I saw out of it. It was pretty close. I'd give a slight advantage to the North Stars. So far, I believe they're 2-0 and since the trade, so, you know, things haven't been going bad for them. The Nordiques, I believe, are 0-2 since the trade, um, so that's a tough thing. If, you know, as a GM, you're on this losing streak with the Nordiques, you're, the ducks are right on your necks, like, how are you approaching this? You know there's no trade anymore, are you just trying to mess around with lineups? Is it too late for that? Are you just trying to keep things in order? What are you looking at there? Uh, no, from learning from experience, I've all again, I'm just restless. I'm like, let's change it, let's change it, let's change it. Um, and that's where Bus has really taken the helm the last couple of years. And you just, you know, what gives you the best chance to win. You stick with it, you get your guys to buy in, and you don't think that a line change is going to make a difference. You just got to hustle and trust in the guys and that everyone's going to put their best effort. Now the Ducks, obviously, you guys were in a little bit of a, a funk before. Is it is it just Turtle being back? Is that the difference? Is it just more energy, different lineups? Now, obviously, you guys made some changes, or we've been seeing a little bit better results lately. No, I don't know. I mean, I think the the first game that I came back after being gone for about a month or two, um, I think that was probably just some, an emotional game. You know, we came out pretty strong. I think we played the Deeks who were, were struggling a little bit. Um, then the, the week after, we just got spanked. And then last night, we played pretty well. So I think it's just uh, you know a combination of everybody having the right mindset before the game starts and just playing with some fun and not playing playing nervous. So nothing, nothing special that we did. Yeah, I guess at some point when you're at the bottom of the barrel – you know, there's no more pressure and it's just go out there, have fun, and then good things start happening as well. Yeah, absolutely. And that's the one thing that I will say about the locker room again, you know, last place, things aren't looking great. Um, but everybody, 
I guess last week we were pretty quiet because we thought we were going to put up a better fight. But outside of that, nobody's down, nobody's bitching. Everyone's still having a good time in the locker room. So just a, a good, even-minded group of guys. Yeah, so the next game on the evening was uh, another one that unfortunately I don't think any of us got to see was the Americans versus the Seals. The Seals won this one 2 nothing. Um, I was in our podcast channel able to get a little bit of a rundown, according to Proctor. Uh, it was a pretty even matchup, apparently. Uh, he gave the edge to the Seals about 60-40 on that matchup. It was 0-0 going into the third, but Rattler was able to get a goal, and then there was an empty netter by Pellet to put him up by those two. Now, going over to the American side, they haven't been winning a lot of games versus those top teams. Is that something that you're concerned about or like with all this talent, or do you think they'll be fine in the end? As a bottom team, I'm not concerned about that at all. <laughs> I'm, talk- I'm talking playoffs or for the long-term run. Crunk, what do you think? Uh, I don't know. Next question. Honestly, honest, I don't, I've, I've played them one time in the last few in the last six weeks or so, and they dominated. That was actually one of my last games of this, as a North Star. We got beat by the Americans pretty good, and, like, they outplayed us. And so they uh, – I think every team has good games, bad games. I, I don't think they're in a, any bad of – they don't have any issues. Now, are those the top two teams? Uh, yeah, as of right now, they are. I would actually say I do have a little concern for the Americans. They got routed by the Tigers the last time they played them. They had a solid loss here with Shawnee being out on that team. So when they're, they seem like they can play and beat competition lower than them. But when they're going against competition at the same level or above, to me, they're not stepping up and they're not answering those challenges. Matt Taylor, that game, I think, was domination by the Tigers there. This game, a solid two nothing victory. I forgot about the game. Yeah, yeah we, we we need to start. We need to start seeing uh, more out of the Americans against those top couple teams if they're looking to make a, a finals run. There, in my opinion. Yeah, I heard something about the the line combination, and I don't know if it was the whole game, but it sounded like they went a true all star line and had like. Proctor, Antioch, and Star all on the ice at the same time with maybe Wood out there. I mean, they put a lot of guns on the, on one line, and then I think Sips was on the second line. Uh, I'm not sure who was with them, but it sounded like it was a not very balanced uh, first and second line. So I don't know if that was a new strategy. I know Proctor takes about 75% of the shifts, so um, it's hard to say which line he's really on, but... Yeah, that can be concerning, and I don't know. Maybe that was a matchup play against what they thought the Seals lines were going to be. I guess another question towards you, since we have a GM here, is how much are you worrying about the other team when you're setting your lines? Are you thinking these are the best lines for our team to do our best overall, or are you looking at saying this team's going to do this, we need to make sure we can match up against that, and we're essentially playing defense the whole game instead of offense? Sure, sure, sure. So I would say... It probably depends on how the game is going, but going into it, you have to just play your lineup and make the other team match up against you. Um, Obviously, when you're playing a team like the Americans, you can't let Proctor score three goals. He has to be your main focus. So if Wood or Sips or somebody else scores a goal on you, you'll live with that. But you have to put your attention on the other team's best player. Um, Outside of that, you have to match up or make your best lineup and hopefully that they adjust to you and they have to play your game, not vice versa. Yeah. Uh, Crunk, what, what are your thoughts on that? Do you ever have a time you come in and they're like, oh, based on this lineup, we're switching it up here, and you kind of feel that's going to hurt us or is it going to make us better? Well, on the North Stars, it uh, the, the lines were changed almost every period. <laughs> um, the only thing that was consistent on that was Ty and I, my uh, personal hype man, uh, trade, were trade, would trade shifts on and off, but that's about it. Uh, but on the Tigers, uh, we've had different lineups the last couple of weeks that I've been there. I think generally a more consistent lineup works better. You can kind of get a feel for where your other players are going to be on the ice. Uh, it just makes the offense flow, I think, a lot better uh, when you just play consistently with a couple of guys just because you know where they're going to be and you're not guessing as much. So um, I think uh, you set your lineups to make your team the best and you go from there. Yeah, I, th- I also think it's tough where if you're switching your lineups to try to counter one of their lines, are you hurting your other line and maybe that second line or maybe it's the first line, whatever you want to call it, 
all of a sudden is that power that you might have that advantage. Are you taking away your advantage and you're actually hurting your overall production as a team? Yeah, in this league where you've played the same guys for the last three, four, five years, experience really matters. Um, and I, that's something that you'll want to keep an eye out with some of the teams that have a majority of new players as the season goes on. They're not going to be passing to the last round guys. The best players are going to know who's a weaker skater and who to target. And you'd be surprised that, you know, whatever it is, 10, 15 games in, their just knowledge of who they're going against is going to matter. So chemistry matters. And then just overall knowledge of who you're playing against, scouting reports are really going to play an impact or make an impact. Yeah, and realistically, in this league, like you said, we've been playing against people for four years plus, you know, the guys who've been in since the beginning, other guys you have a couple of years on. You know, I'm going to play against someone who's maybe a little bit higher competition than me, probably better than if I was playing them on a Troy league and I don't know who they are because Mm -hmm. you know their speed, you know they're fast, you know they have a good shot. So you're going to kind of try to counter that and you're going to hopefully that's going to work. Not to say they're not going to ever beat you or anything like that, but I'm going to play someone like that better than I would in a, just a normal Troy, a Troy league. So and do it, you have somebody specifically that you that is a high-end talent that you shut down all the time that you'd like to share with everybody? Well, I guess the question would be is who don't I shut there down? There it is. is. Is the real question. I, no, I, I mean, I think I play a lot of people good. I, you know, stop Proctor sometimes. I've Oh yeah, skated down sugar. I think a lot of it too is you start knowing those defenses. Sugar did score three goals on you guys last night. I wasn't on the ice for any. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so you're throwing hot take. other D pairing. You're throwing How's that fucking your bus other feel? demon under the bus? But but either either way, that's not the point. I actually might have. Did he get the first one? I might have been on the. I was on the ice for the first one if that one was his. No, you were on the bench when that happened. E- either way, I guess my point though is you you know a lot of teams like you know the seals, you know the ducks. Uh, you know, the C or Proctor, he's always looking for that breakout pass for the breakaway. You know, Sugar's doing that a lot. You know, the Fisher's doing that a lot. As a defenseman, you know to look for that. You know to pinch back on that. You know not to let them get behind. Where in a different league where you don't know what those people are doing, you might not be looking at that as much. And you might be on that point trying to save the puck from going out where you know when you're playing guys like a Proctor, a Fister, any of those guys you know they're going to be doing that. So your concern is not to keep the puck in the zone. Your concern is to not let them have a breakaway for the goal. So it has nothing to do with, oh, did I play this guy good or who I can stop or anything like that. You're just you're backing off in certain areas that are letting you get, I don't want to say an advantage, but an advantage of what you would do against a normal team. Sure. Hey, real quick, uh, Sammy Bear says that you owe her Christmas Eve brunch with a lot of mimosas and you're buying. So she's coming on the podcast on the on. Is that what the is that what the trade is? Yeah, we're uh, like I said, we're having the Christmas Eve one. I'm going to buy. I'm going to make some pancakes, some eggs, some biscuits, some. Oh really? You're going to watch the kids. She's going to come in as well, I guess. Proctor will be here. Mackie will, or Mackie will be here. It sounds like Dougie might be here. Hedis. Oh, know, there you go. Sammy will be here. We'll have a great talk about M and L hockey. Nice. She's really excited. She's really knowledgeable of everybody's stats, and she follows the league really closely. You know, she can start subscribing to the podcast, maybe catch up the last 26 episodes. Oh, she, she listens. She listens. We always love our fans. Uh, so next game of the night, kind of the depressing game of the night, or the great game of the night, depending how you look at it, would be the Mighty Ducks versus the Whalers. Uh, 5-2 win by the Ducks. I'm going to let the GM start out over here with the fruits uh give us a rundown of what you saw in the game yeah i i would go back to chemistry um i felt like the whalers in some situations actually had more talent on the ice um but just could not connect for some reason grab me a solid gold please uh yeah they couldn't connect um i mean geo was playing second game with i think bauer and who do we have I think maybe at, oh crunk mm-hmm. and you know at one point there was trent and peso on the ice and dave p i mean just talent mismatch for sure and it just it wasn't clicking for those guys i think cam uh let in a bouncy goal that was just kind of a weird like yeah. bounced over his head and the, i think the that first got goal in. went super high yeah. i was right there i thought it was I coming out he I kicked it, it in, out right? and he actually tried to jump back in the net to, when it was coming down and he 
kicked it in. It was just, it's one of those kind of, I don't want to call it a fluke goal, but it's one of those things that just happen. It's a weird situation that gave you guys the lead, which is always, you know, a nice start to the night. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely what we needed. Um, I think that got in his head a little bit and then just sugar had a, a certain attitude about him and he was just all smiles and, um, you can tell when Sugar's pissed, he's pissed, and when he's feeling it, he was uh, doing well. And yeah, he he definitely carried the team at overall team effort. Um, I think defensively for the Whalers, um, they were rock solid. They they played great. Um, definitely one pairing played better than the other. Um, I feel I like you what. had a smirk on your face <laughs> when you said they played great. Like yeah, right. We well, got five on those fuckers. One out of four. One out of four played great. Um, no, Pudre. I <laughs> well, last night Piercy poked away from me like three times, put me in the boards once. So after the game, I was like, "Man, you played really well." And he's like, "I always think you're fucking with me when you give me a compliment because I don't think you're being sincere." Um, and I'm never going to tell you if I am or not. So I great know, game I last know, night. I know the answer to that, so you don't have to tell me if you're sincere or not because I know <laughs> what's going on there. Uh, Crunk, you subbed in for the Ducks. I want to hear your thoughts as well. Uh, it. it it was a fun skate. Um, the the ducks played fast. I think the line. I had a lot of fun playing with uh, with Bauer and Geo. We it felt like we really uh, kind of really controlled the play when we were out there. Uh, we kept it deep and it, yeah, it was it was fun. It was a good skate. It was hard. Um, uh, it felt like honestly like the Whalers kind of gave up in like the third period. Um, but it was. I'm sure. I think you would attest. No. To the, the giving, giving up. up, yeah, they were. Well, it was definitely frustration set in, and at some point, you got to make a choice of all right, let's rally back. You know, we've got the skill, we've got the talent. Um, you know, we're, we're playing the last place team, um, and it just it just never clicked. And granted, we were getting. I mean, we had our our number one sub, Crunk, fucking sniped one, top titties. Um, Ruble hit one off of Dave P's PP, tipped it into the net. So. There was not a lot of good bounces for the for the whale tail. Yeah, I mean it was. We got our butts kicked. That's there's not a whole lot we can say for that. That first goal was kind of one of those things like ah oh, fuck, just you know kind of down on that. But we were able to tie it up, and it's like okay, this is where we're gonna come back and we're gonna roll. Then you guys got another one, and all of a sudden you're up three one, and that's where it's kind of like, uh oh, what's what's going on here? And what? then I think. My goal broke their back. Was yeah. it was it Rubel who got the fourth one, or did he get the fifth one? I don't know. I uh, kind of lost count. Yeah, it was Rubel like he had, he had a nice he had one that came out slap shot. It's just like oh fuck. So it's just it's one of those things where you could definitely start feeling the deflating going on, and yeah. it was a situation we talked about with lineups where you know period one doesn't go the way you want it, so you switch it up. Period two doesn't go, you switch it up, and. I mean, it was definitely noticeable from the bench when every single shift, it felt like we were matching up against somebody different, which from a forward perspective, sometimes it gives you a little boost. Other times it's maybe difficult to get a feel for who you're playing with. So sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And here's the thing, too. You kind of mentioned it a little bit was, um, I think his head is here. <laughs> um you, you mentioned oh earlier. <laughs> oh, welcome to the Hello. second half. I only come in when it's... Uh, so so anyways, let me, let me continue. Sorry. Right. <laughs> so we have, we have our two lines. We essentially have our, um, you know, Trent and Serta line, and then we had our Dave P and Peso line mm -hmm. with Weaver and uh, Ananda in there as well. It feels like we should be dominating that second line matchup with our Peso and Dave P line. Yeah. But we did not do that at all last night. And one of those things where if you look at like a Trent and a Serta, even if they're not 100% producing, if we can go even, even with you and um, Sugar there, that's fine. Because if you look at the talent of our team, yeah, the there's, always, are there's, always, there's always at least one good center or one good player on that second line for every team. But when you look at like Peso and you look at Dave P, we feel like we should always have the talent advantage there yeah. and we should be able to do something there, but we didn't even have a lot of good chances there. No, no. And to be honest with you, um, I think last night was actually the first time I've ever had Riley as a goalie, at least within recent memory. Um, he gave up 
maybe a couple bad rebounds or things where he pushed back out. But I was telling the guys last night, he is one of the more aggressive goalies or at least active goalies. He's talking a lot, which I like. He's, uh, you know, he's not very passive. He's jumping on pucks face first. Like he's not afraid to get hit. So it was, uh, it was definitely a good win and good night for him. I think he had two, uh, two wins back to back. He did. And, uh, Mr. Hedis, thank you for joining us, One, oh. Now, I saw you. It looked like you were keeping score a lot of the night for this Whalers Mighty Ducks game. Oh, he was uh, busy counting shots because that's what I, goalies do. Yeah, baby. It's the best factor <laughs> in the game. How can you tell which way the ice tilts? It's the shots. So, um, <laughs> Actually, that was one of the biggest factors I was going to bring up about the Whalers and Ducks game. If you wanted an indicator kind of on who, you know, who controlled the play, what way it was ice tilted, who had the momentum in the game, it was 24-12 at the end of the game of shots. You guys, had out, the Ducks outshot the Whalers. And in the second period, the Whalers got one shot. You can't expect to win a hockey game, period, getting one shot in a period. So, um, yeah, I don't know. Next, Hopefully next game, the Whalers can get it um, uh, turned up and uh, get on their game again and, and get out of this rut. But the last couple games, uh, I feel like they've been, um, you know, have been getting kind of outshot, outplayed a little bit. So we'll see where they go from, I guess, here after the tough loss against the Ducks. So was there anything that stuck out to you in that situation? or? Um, I guess the biggest thing is you, you guys had already touched on it, was the second line getting outplayed. Normally Dave P, Peso, they're wheeling and dealing. They're uh, always first to the corners on pucks. Um, one of the facets actually Kronk had brought up last, uh, last night to me when we played against the North Stars we thought was really tough was that the Whalers, sometimes they clutch and grab and you can kind of bitch. It's like, oh, it's interference. And then sometimes uh, it's like it's a, the, the beer league bump or like, you know, you're, you're going to skate, put the puck past the guy, but then the defenseman's going to fall down and bump into you, and you guys are going to both run, kind of collide, bump into each other. You take the player out of the play sort of thing. It's not illegal. It's not interference. It's just what happens sometimes when two bodies, you know, try to make a play in the puck, as uh, uh, what uh, Troy and Pace always says, right? It's what play can make. <laughs> so uh, um, I didn't feel like the Whalers had a lot of that last night. Um, there's a couple times where the Ducks just got clean entries into the zone and uh, from the neutral zone in. There's one especially Bauer had a cross-ice pass to – a uh, geo like no look in a third period like yeah. across him and then it, it dropped it to like crunk and crunk get it back to geo and they got a chance on cam so normally you don't see that normally you guys are a little bit better than neutral zone so that that's more than fair um so as we always say we have the whoop line 71475 whoop we actually did get a voicemail this week nice so uh let's play that real quick and then we'll go from there What's up, guys? It's Sniper. Just calling in to say hi. Hope uh, Bauer and Crunk enjoy their time on the podcast. Tuesdays are always enjoyable after a win, let alone two wins, like myself. But didn't certainly didn't call in to brag. I don't like to brag, but I really wanted to talk to the trusted voice. I want a real take, not some PC answer. I want a real trusted voice opinion on the Whalers. Okay, what's going on? Do you think your GM should have at least tried to make a trade? You know, are you frustrated that they didn't make any efforts? I mean, I begged the Whalers to make me an offer. They made no offers. So, you know, seems to me like uh, they need a tweak to make things right, and they just didn't do it. But I want your take on the Whalers, and what's the morale like? Is there any dissension in the locker room? I mean, everybody think that they're just a – you know, a tweak away from doing it or what's going on. We want the top take on the whalers. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. I'll hang up and listen. As always, we got to thank Mr. Troy Otto for the call. I, I'm not totally buying. He wasn't calling to brag about his two <laughs> wins, but uh, I didn't get that at all. I thought he was very sincere. That That's besides the point. So uh, uh, I can address some of his questions. So uh, first thing is, I don't know what type of moves the Whalers were trying to make as far as trades or not. Uh, obviously, you're always trying to make your team better. If they felt like they didn't have an offer or something available to make the team better, it's probably better we didn't make a move. Uh, second, obviously the morale wasn't good after the game. People were pissed off about having the loss. Um, but in my opinion, I'm glad that we weren't happy about that. I don't want to have a team that... You know, instantly come back in the locker room. Let's jam some music and start partying. I'm glad that we're not happy with losing. You know, doesn't mean you can't go out into the Labatt party uh, deck and then talk to people and have a couple of laughs. But in the locker room, when you first go back, yeah, I'm not going to be happy. I don't like losing. I want to win games. So if the rest of the team is like that as well, I'm fine with that. 
there was one or two people who were a little riled up after the game, like said a couple things about what they said what the team is, but that's going to stay within the locker room. People weren't happy, but I think that's to be expected. People brought their opinions. As far as things go with the lineups and everything, I think we're at a lineup where we know we're going to get a couple points here and there. Right now, I think our main focus needs to be getting those the playoff berth, making sure we're clinching that. I wouldn't mind seeing if, because of right now, I don't want to karma everything like that. Once that happens, if we toyed with our lineups a little bit here or there for a game or two, I don't think we're in the position to get a bye right now. After that, if we can get a playoff locked up, why not toy with the lineups a little bit? Try a couple new things going into the playoffs. Maybe something gels, something works a little bit because, you know, our team right now, we have 24 goals on the season. We're second to last on goals four. The uh, Nordiques have 17 on the year. Obviously, we're not putting up the goals we need to. We need to. So there's issues there. If we can get a better lineup for high sc- better scoring, it's going to be a good thing. But at the same time, do we really want to risk having these new lineups and then lose more games and then risk a chance of not making the playoffs? Yeah, it all kind of comes down to position towards the end of the season. I mean, if you're comfortably, you can, if you lose a game and going from third to fourth isn't that big of a deal, or if saying from third to third isn't a big deal, then maybe you risk it, maybe change the lineup a little bit. Because, I mean, I know I brought it up before to a couple of your, your GMs at the good old Madison Park Bowl. Hey, uh, Trent. Why don't you pull a little bit of D to throw old man night up on O? And then I got the whole scoffs, you know, like the laid back trend. Ah, you know, maybe one day. And then, you know, talk to Dave P. Well, never, Wade. No way, bro. Ice, <laughs> ice the best defenseman. Like, All right, Dave P. Get on the hype train. So, um, yeah, maybe it's something you guys could look forward to. But I guess my only question to you, Piercy, is that Trent is not going to sponsor a trip to Hooters after your, uh, the big loss, similar to that Barso article that Hal posted the other day. I don't read any. I don't click on anything um, that. Uh, so the actual... soccer, their, their soccer team <laughs> lost, and uh, I guess the, the little little token of the nugget of knowledge from there was uh, you got to hate losing more than you like winning in that article, and that it was it's not wrong to take kids to Hooters after losing. No, it's not. It's not wrong to, to kid. It's not wrong to take kids to Hooters. It was wrong to take them to Hooters after losing. So as long as you guys didn't go to Hooters or anything after the game last night, you should be fine. Yeah, so like I was saying, I don't click on anything that Hal actually posted in <laughs> Slack. I don't, I don't trust viruses, anything like that, especially at work. Uh, second, I can agree with that. I think season one, I think I remember when there was a talk about should the Whalers get to pick one person every round to flip their players with? I, I, I went in and I posted, what, does everybody get a trophy in, or get a ribbon in this league? And people were like, who is this asshole there? And it's like, you guys are all babies. If your team sucks for a year, Future they suck trusted for a year. voice, that's who. <laughs> Boom. Fuck yeah. <laughs> bang, bang. <laughs> Turtle with the hot, with the hot take. I, you know, Generation Z and the millennials might cry for evenness when it comes to that. But in the real whoa, world. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm not the one that gets upset when I say tendies, okay? That's the bartender, Elizabeth, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Everything was so normal until the goalie showed up. Oh, that's, that's how it rolls. That's how it rolls. All right. All right that, we'll that, get back on track. That, that, has, that has nothing to do with winning, losing, and crying, and not taking it like a man. But either way, that's kind of off kilter. But yeah. No, so I have a question, question. follow-up to Troy's voicemail. From the Whalers locker room, it's, I think it's very clear in the Ducks who calls the shots, and that's Busta. I mean, I'm purely just for for the looks. Now, who's calling the shots in the Whalers locker room? Who's who's making lineups? I know that Dave P has all the answers, but I got to know who's who gets the final say on this is what we're doing, and then mid-game, who's barking up to say we need to change it up? Well, I got an addendum after Pierce answers that question for you. It might be a little spicy. Now the trade deadline's over, I think I can get, I can throw names around and people won't get mad. So, Oh, I, I, I do want to hear that afterwards. But to be fair, I would assume I've heard that Trenton sort of communicate and they kind of agree upon a lineup there. Um, I know Serta, he's actually, like after games, he's asked opinions on what he thinks lineup should be uh, type of thing. And I know I've given him some opinions and he's actually, I don't know if he's taken that advice or whatever, but some lineups have kind of changed towards that direction. So I think they make the final say, obviously. I don't know if there's one person over the other of how they discuss that. Um, I would say probably mid-game. It's a mix between the two, and it's probably a mix between the bench barking or not. I, you know, as being a spring GM, I know how it can go. Where you're looking at your lineups, people are saying this isn't working. You're going to make changes. You have to make those decisions of 
Do I think it's going to work? Do I not? Do you want to take other people's advice? Sometimes when you're not winning, you just need to take that advice as well. So it's kind of that spectrum of, you know, there's even times within just real life, corporate life jobs where you ask people's opinion, you might totally agree and have the same answer as them. But as you're asking the opinions of those people, and then it looks like you take their advice, it also makes the morale of your team better as well. You know, kind of one of those tricks of this is my direction I'm going in, but I'm going to ask everybody's opinion first. We all are in lockstep, so you're going to say, "Yeah, we took your idea. We thought it was great." That's fa- that's fair. What's your addendum? Uh, oh, my addendum was uh, I don't know if uh, Kronk heard this because I know he's on North Stars a little bit, but I think the hottest seat in the, the Whalers locker room for like trade during the trade rumors about a m- month ago, three weeks ago, was the assistant GM himself, Serta. I've I've heard he was involved in two different trades, possibly trading himself, for example, to the North Stars for Ty, and then that got shut down eventually. And then there's also talks between the Deeks and the Whalers about acquiring Serta for maybe like a Pete and having like a you know a high low, and then like Panny really? to swap himself. Yeah. Well, it but wouldn't have it, been Serta and Ty straight up. Obviously, there would have been no, no. I was just saying back. it'd be a high and a low, right? So, but oh, both gotcha. both those both those kind of both those talks kind of went through. But I mean, Trent and Ty would have been. Uh, like, you know, nice jams because Trent's more hands-on. Ty's a little bit more laid back. He does lineup sort of thing. Oh, so man, I've been dying for a GM trade. All other trades are just boring to this point. We need some <laughs> GM trades. So next season, or we can just rewrite the rules and we can extend the trade deadline. And, you know, it's our rule book, so we can change it as, as we'd like. I want a GM trade. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I heard some rumors. I didn't actually hear names, but I heard there were some people that GM wise, it thought it was probably going to be their last year as a GM as well. So that'll be interesting too to see what happens. Is that, and if there's the possibility if we could extend to a possible eight team, who those would come in as well. But I guess anything can happen. I think if you make your team better, it's, I would have a problem if I was a GM to trade myself, I think, because you'd have a lot of attachment to everybody. But who knows? Maybe Serta just doesn't want to be a GM anymore as well. I don't know. Unless you're Skillman, you're just straight business. <laughs> <laughs> that guy's a cold-blooded killer. He, any, but nobody's safe on that team. Exactly. Ryan Allen's the real asshole on that team. <laughs> Skillman's a teddy bear. <laughs> Grunk's just dying. <laughs> He's laughing. All the saver metrics Allen has in there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the numbers say you got to go. He's got this giant database with all these numbers <laughs> on there, and he just gives it all to Skillman, and he's like, do my dirty work. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so let's move on real quick to the power rankings. Uh, so we have the Seals 1, Tigers 2, North Stars 3, Americans 4, Ducks 5, Whalers 6, and the Nordique 7th. Anybody have any disagreement with these rankings? Um, I guess I won't say any disagreement. Unfortunately, I was with the six week gap. There's some things that like there's some teams I actually have never even seen um, firsthand. So I guess the only question mark is maybe the North Stars and Americans. Um, I know that trade firsthand made the North Stars pretty strong. Um, so I don't really have any glaring issues with that. Yeah, I think it looks good. Yeah, I, I think you could flip the Americans above the North Stars. The North Stars, there are 2-0 and o since the trade happened, but I think they've both been one-goal games. One of the games, they were a goal machine, but they let up a crap load of goals. Last night it was 2-1 against the lowly Nordiques as far as you know Troy seems to say right now. So, you know, time will tell with those guys. I might put the Americans, but it's power rankings. It's Troy's opinion, and nobody cares about those. <laughs> So uh, the standings are next. Uh, Golden Seals, Americans, Tigers, North Stars, Whalers, Nordiques, and the Mighty Ducks. The Golden Seals actually clinched the playoffs last night. They have an eight-point lead on that number one seed. I think it's pretty fair to say they are going to be getting that first-round bye. Down at the bottom, I'll even include the Whalers, 17, 13, and 12 for the Mighty Ducks at the bottom. Turtle Tim, Mm -hmm. how are you guys feeling right now uh, with the standings? So from lessons learned week to week, what we did last night, um, dismantling the Whalers' defense except for one, um, was a good feeling. We've had that feeling two weeks before that where we came back, uh, I think played the Nordiques and, and beat them pretty good. 
But then the game in between that, we got spanked. So we realized that every week we could put up six or get six put up on us. So um, the standings don't really matter to us. Um, we just need to get into the playoffs. We're obviously not getting the first seed. So where we're at doesn't matter as long as we get in there. And then hopefully we're on an upward swing and maybe make some of those top tier teams a, a little nervous to play us. So you guys have five games left. Uh, what's that? 15 more possible points. Realistically, how many points do you think you guys are going to end up with? So five games. Hmm. Just say 15. Yeah, and you can't get more than three per game? Correct. So like 17 is not an option? Correct. Okay. Yeah, I'd say like 14 and a half. Well, I'm, I'm going to say you guys clinch the playoffs then. All right, perfect. See you in the first round. <laughs> Look what, at how many points. Oh, actually, I should bear a question, Kronk. How many points do you think the Ducks are going to get at the end of the season? By the end of the season, so they got five games left, right? We're at, we, we we're play, at twelve now. They're at, at twelve. Well, not like how many points of the remaining five games oh, do you they're going to get? Sorry, yeah, that's what I meant. And we, I mean, they play. We and play against their, you guys. Who were their last two games? So it was. Uh, so they played the Whalers. It was so Whalers far, last they play, night. They and play then everybody else still. The Ducks the play North the Stars Ducks play the North. That. The Ducks to play the North Stars as the last game. This uh, as the second last game of the season. They play us the last game of the season. Correct. I'm going to say they beat the Nordiques and take the Americans to overtime and lose. So that would give them four more points. So that's going to put them at 16 points. My original prediction was to make the playoffs 16 points would get you in. It's looking pretty tight on that end. Whalers have 17 points. I don't think that we're a gimme at all on that side of things. You know, so I think it's going to be close there. If you had to pick today, I'm going to leave you out of here, Turtle, because you're not. You're a little quote unquote biased. Yeah, you're biased. I'm very. Who's honest. missing the playoffs Second as of right boys. now? I'm going to say the Ducks, and it's just because of the. I was thinking through it, the schedule that the uh, Nordiques have to play. They only have to play the Ducks left, and they already. I think that. Because they already have the edge, they're going to be able to squeak out two games, I think, and make the playoffs based on what I said what the Ducks would do. What about you, Hedis? Are you ready for a left field uh, shot caller right here? Yep. The Whalers are not making the playoffs. Oh, Boom. Man. Hit them with it. You know why? Why? Because they still can't score goals. The De- And heads up play, the Whalers have to beat the Deeks and the Ducks. The Deeks also need to beat the Whalers and the Ducks. The Ducks also have to beat... You know, the same two teams. And I feel right now the bottom two teams are going to want it more. They're going to come out firing. They're going to come out showed up. They're going to try to get points. Um, and when you're in more of a desperation mode, sometimes you generally, you know, it's like we got to play. You got to show up. So then you hit you hit it from go. You hit the green button to go from, like, the, the puck drop. So you don't have a lot of time. You don't have, like, the first or second period to get into the game, roll into it, and get momentum behind you sometimes. Like some of the better teams, like the Seals, sometimes Dylan always talks about it, where how we're not, you know, we're not playing our game the first period. And then the Seals show up in the second. They score two or three or four. But – that first period, they caught flat-footed. A team like the Ducks and Ordeeks that's really hungry to try to get in the playoffs, they could take advantage of that. Now, do I think it's a huge possibility? I'm not going to say it's a huge possibility, but for, for the ratings' sake, I'm going to say the Whalers. I mean, like I said, I don't think it's a gimme that we're clinching the playoffs when you look at it. We're still five up on the Ducks, which is a good amount of points per round when you look at that. Oh, yeah. But you guys have been playing good the last couple of weeks. If you can continue that... You know, we still have a head-to-head matchup with the Nordiques. If we lose that, all of a sudden it's a one-point difference there as well. So neither of those are gimmies. Now it's harder for two teams to climb on points on, on that situation as well. I think the Whalers are a team that we need to start out hot. We need to get a couple early goals, at least a one-goal lead. If not, after that first period, if it's a 0-0 or we're down, that's where we start to get nervous. It's almost like you start clinching those butt cheeks a little bit, and you're just like, how... How are we not scoring? What's going on? It's just happening again. You know, you get those teams that kind of do that, and it's just we need to get on a roll, and once we're on a roll, we're playing great, and it feels like we can beat anybody in the league. Yeah, I've got a slightly different outlook on who's going to get left out, um, more from a collusion standpoint, and I think that the Ducks are going to get left out, and here's why. I think that the Golden Seals, the Americans, the Tigers – um, the general management is going to get together and they're going to realize that we don't want to play the Ducks and however these standings come out. Let's do whatever we can to make sure that we put our shitty lineups against the Whalers and the Nordiques, make sure they get their points 
so that the the high flying ducks throwing up six goals a game nobody wants to play against them and let, let's keep them out because we're afraid to go out in the first round so what you're saying essentially is the seals americans tigers possibly the north stars are just going to say we're going to let the nordiques get some points yes <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I can buy that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know how else to explain it. Like, oh, if I was if I was the Golden Seals right now, I just got the little X next to my name, and we're clinched for the playoffs. I'd start looking at who do we not want to play first round, and if you my choice is between the Mighty Ducks, the Mighty Ducks, or the Nordiques, the Nordics. No, wait, I, like, whatever we can do, let the Nordiques win, keep their one point ahead of the Ducks. And keep the Ducks out of the playoffs because nobody wants to get bounced in the first round. That's very presumptuous of you that you guys are going to win the first round and then you're going to play against the Seals afterwards because the first two teams still get a bye turtle. Oh, yep, yep. So let's shift that to the uh, Americans Tigers. Eh, either way. Let, let's Thanks. actually cool. shift it, though, like you're saying. So we have the Americans, the Tigers, and I'll throw the North, our North Stars in there as well. 22, 21, and 20 points. I'm going to say the Seals are getting that bye. Turtle... Who do you think is going to get the other buy? There's two buys. There's two, two buys. buys. First and second place. Hmm. So one of those teams is going to finish second and get the, the other buy. Uh, one of those teams is going to finish. Wait, you said that the, the we're, already, we're already giving the seals the first buy. We're seals not first, the seals buy. The first buy. Yeah, they're they're, they're up by eight points right now. They're, they're, we're gonna, all right. Well, we're gonna, of, we're going to rip off a six game win streak, baby. We're one of the, the first, first two room. teams. It, it's going to be, in my opinion, the North Stars. I think the trade made them very scary. They, boom! They, hot yeah, take. that's the, actually the hotter take than me saying that. Me say pew, that. pew, pew, pew. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> As the goalies say, no. I mean, I I think they uh, they're gonna climb. I don't know what the rest of their schedule looks like. Maybe the next few games, but yeah, I think they've they're on the upswing. Yeah, I'm gonna personally give it to the Tigers. As long as Matt Taylor's there, I feel like they've been playing good. Skillman, Slocum, Matt Taylor. Hedis as I'm, well. I'm, I'm the Tuka Rask of the league, baby. No, everyone's like, oh, this goalie makes saves sometimes, but you know, you're nondescript. You just you're just back there behind March on the little shithead. Hey, and, I was listening to players. I included pasta. it in there. Never I saw I saw your, your face looking. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's the goalie for Boston. Everyone calls him Boston Ravens and says Tuka Rask sucks when he gives up like four goals, but when he gets like five shutouts, they're like, Yeah, we don't really care. Here's a goalie. Tim, oh. T- Tim Thomas still isn't around. <laughs> He's like 45. Yeah, yeah he, he had a concussion thing the other day. Anyways, we'll get back on topic. <laughs> Point is, yeah, the, t- the Tigers are... Hey, Hedis, what's save percentage yeah. all about? <laughs> Turtle, you're just doing it on purpose now. <laughs> all right. But yeah, I'm going to give it to the Tigers. I think their talent with Matt Taylor, kind of like the guy who's too good really to be in the league, but still in the league, is when he, if he's showing up, he can take over games and he's going to win them enough games to get by, by there. I'm not going to go to either of you guys. You guys are by part, you know. Hey, look, the, 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 the schedule is circled with the North Stars on it. Uh, the Sketty is circled, Troy, so I'm just going to let you know that, bud. Crunk, am I assuming you think you guys are going to get the bye, or do you think another team's going to get the bye? Oh, absolutely, we're going to get the, get the bye. Of course, of course, of course. Um, so the last thing on our agenda as of now is we have the North Stars game, or the All-Star game coming up next week so we have a draft to do uh crunk has volunteered as a captain and bauer did as well obviously bauer isn't here right now so turtle tim was nice enough to step in uh for that as well bauer and i sit next to each other in the locker room so i feel like that makes me pretty much power pretty qualified to speak on his behalf you're literally his twin right now spitting image so looking at that um Actually made a quick draft board. If you're watching on YouTube or on Twitch right now, I switched over to share that screen as well. Um, we did flip a coin before the start of the podcast, and Crunk is going to be getting the first pick. What kind of coin did you one? flip? Was it a quarter or a penny? This this is pretty big here, right? It was a quarter. It was a quarter? Okay, that's fair. That's that's within the weight limit of, of coin flipping acceptance. Yes. We're doing <laughs> snake draft uh, style as well. So Crunk will get the first pick. Turtle will get the next two picks. Then Crunk two picks. I'm sure most of you guys have done fantasy football as well. Mm-hmm. So... Um, now, I don't have my glasses. Are you going to be able to help me with this? Is this in any ranking or Bef- order? Before These you are forwards, defensemen, and goalies, and they're just in an alphabetical order. Oh, Before goodness. you guys start, I have a question. Have either one of you named your all-star team yet and or are you going to do it afterwards? 
I had another question too. Like, do I get to coach this team? Because yeah, oh, full suit. If you're not I'm there, going, full suit. Then I'm going full suit and I'm going to say. Chair on the ice. Better listen. I'm going to say <laughs> you're allowed to, but it's not mandatory in any way to have an affiliation with this team after the next ten minutes. So that's up to you. But Crunks Crushers versus Turtles. I don't know. It's not my team. Something. I think I'm going to draft the worst team possible and then make <laughs> Bauer deal with it. Unless both of you guys draft the worst team possible. First pick for Bauer, Turtle. You're yeah. not on that list. You're not eligible. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, but, Mr. Crunk, do you have a first pick? Uh, that would be Matt Taylor. Oh, wow, that's man. a shocker over there. I didn't see that coming. So, with the second and third pick, we're over to Mr. Turtle Tim. All right, I'm guessing uh, I'll take Proctor. Going Mr. Polly Proctor. This is... And forgive me, I don't have my glasses, so I'm going to lean over a little bit. I Trusted don't... voice, who would you take next? His name starts with a... Can you move the cursor so I can see the... Oh, I'm going to go with uh, the pistol. Are you sure about that? No, no do-overs. No. Oh, what a savage. This next GM, here he is. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> okay, we're going to go Pistol P. Wow. That, that's Owen Wilson. Wow. <laughs> so we're going back over to Crunk with the four and five. I will take Fister. That's that was where I would have been going over there, but Pete is a highly talented player. So that brings us back to you at number five. I'm going to take Judge. Ooh, he's a forward on the All Star Committee. But a lot of people would say you could throw him at defense in this situation. That brings us back over to Mr. Turtle Tim with the double. Uh, sugar. Yeah, I was kind of I was thinking you maybe with the uh, duck love you would have been went with him uh, at three. All right. Are you gonna take a forward next or defense? <laughs> I don't know. What about you? Yes. Talk into the microphone, please. <laughs> This is when you go off the board, you choose like a goalie. <laughs> <laughs> he takes a kicker in the third round. I like kickers. Uh, I'll go with, uh, let's see, how many? I guess I'll go with Femme. Andy Femme, that's a quality pick right there. His rookie season, he's put up a lot of points. He's made a big impact on the Deke, except for in the record book. And he also takes short shifts, so, I mean, all, for all the fans at home that like long ice shifts. Pete will like that. Yeah, Pete loves that. Peso loves that. Oh, yeah, short and nervous. That's fun. That brings us back to a double for Mr. Crunk with 8-9 and nine overall in the draft. Crunk's going to take a goalie, I know. I will take Chris Taylor. Oh, nice. That was pick number eight. Back to him at nine. That's his probably his second defenseman, I would say, on this list. And uh, Trent. Trent, very versatile. He could play forward or defense wherever you need him. Yeah, how did that work with the All Star? Because I know, like, I don't think Trent's played any D, but everyone probably thinks of him as a defenseman. How did that work? Trent actually got voted in as a forward. Apparently, he was one of the top guys at defense, and I think there were some people complaining after the top defensemen were put in, and it's like, hey, he's really a forward. He hasn't played defense, and then the votes actually took him back to a forward election. So. By complaining, it means someone mentioned, a.k.a. me in the chat, isn't Trent a forward all year? <laughs> and then I was like, yeah, you're right. But the fans got it right. Obviously, he's, I think, top six, seven in scoring. He's a force out there. I mean, you he know, could be an all-star at either point. When, when Miss Panny and Pookie are voting twice, you know, you got to get the, you gotta get lots <laughs> of votes out there for Trent, so it makes sense. Is it my turn? Correct. It is your turn. I have two? You have Correct two. two. Um, I'm going to go with, you know, Slocum actually has put up a lot of goals. I'm going to go with Slocum and uh, Slocum. Johnny, Johnny Starr on the blue line. No, other side. There you go. Slocum has really torn it up late. He was originally, this was originally uh, Mr. Bill Suit's spot, but with his injury, Slocum was the first alternative there. A lot of people were surprised that he didn't actually uh, make the voting a rid. You know, originally, uh, but I think he was late to the boat on his uh, tearing it I'll up. I'll tell you what, I just fucked up. I don't have my glasses on, and you move some things around. I hope, oh, this is not going to be good. Sorry, Bauer. 
<laughs> I hope Slocum really overperforms. <laughs> Slocum's arguably. I feel like that's a pretty mm, good. Slocum's pick. arguably. Yeah. Up there. We're not going to talk about that. All right. right but we'll we're see. back to number 12. Come on. <laughs> Let's go, Matt. Fuck this up. <laughs> I'm going to take Shawnee. Oh, of course you would. I have the numbers messed up on the draft board, but we should be going to 13 oh, with uh, so Crunk as well. Lots of talent still on the board. Oh, that's an all-star I mean, game. it's an all-star <laughs> game. <laughs> oh, it looks like we have Fedorov still on the board at number five. Well, I mean, you did draft Gretzky before. <laughs> like, And Star. He's already been picked. He wasn't updated on this list that I'm looking at. No, nope, not there he is. Refresh. Ruble. Son of a dick fucker. All right. Back to Turtle. Uh, now to the guys. Number 14. <laughs> the guys that I pick, do they have to play that position? You can play them wherever you want. <laughs> look, what, look what Fister said. <laughs> <laughs> what do he say? Fister texts. He's like, dude. I was like, if Crook doesn't take Shawnee, I'm just going to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking that too. But yeah. Going into, going into this draft, well, I'm like the the the, the Fister Shawnee connection. Coach Crunk or? here is definitely yeah, planning out Fister Shawnee. Yeah. That's what I was. Shawnee I was going to take Shawnee, but I uh, he moved the list on me, so that's all right. We'll make it fun. All right. So I need one more. I'm going to put. I'm going to put Benny on D. So I'll take Ben. Oh, spicy take. Ooh. And you have another pick right now. And then I'm going to go... Oh, man, we're going to be so fucking fast. I'm going to go Serta. Ooh, both teams are fast. <laughs> it's an all-star game. Yeah, but I like real fast. And that brings us back to Crunk for the double as well. Lots of options still available. More defensemen than forwards. So, uh, and we still have the goalie pick available. Take a goalie, you loser. <laughs> Ooh, a little shit talking here. You should take Hattis. Oh wait, I don't, I don't see his name. On no, I'm in the, I'm in the Bender Bowl, bud. <laughs> as a skater, as a, a skater, skater. <laughs> world class defenseman. I'm going to take Dave P. Nice. and Geo. Nice. Wow. So back to Turtle for the double. We have lots of forwards just drafted by Crunk. Getting low on that side. I'm going to go One with... One of my uh, forwards is going to play defense. Yeah, I'm going to throw Antioch on D and then McShannock as well. <laughs> <I can't. laughs> is this NHL hits? Uh, is this NHL hits? What's wrong? <laughs> I'm a little surprised with that pick based on the Lapuje brothers and Edge still available at this oh, Dude, Antioch, you, you take the talent, man. Antioch's fantastic. Trust me. Trust me. I am going to take... We're going to play a 4-1 offense. You ready? Are you going to take the brothers? <laughs> take the brothers. I'm taking Dylan. Ah, oh, Lovely. That's Lovely. That's actually a really hot take. <laughs> and Matt Lapudre. Oh, perfect. Done deal. You you have to take Eric to split off the brothers now since he didn't do it back to back. I don't have to do that. You do. Turtle's, right. Turtle's gonna do the opposite of that now just <laughs> you said that. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna go with who's better? Edge, edge, edge. Who's edge play for? Americans. Americans. He's generally the top D pairing on their second line. He did score a Bender Bowl goal two weeks ago. All right. I'll go with the uh, Brawny and La Pure. Which one? Oh, Eric's Eric's the only one left. left. Okay, I'm sorry. The one I'm looking at says Matt's still here, so I'll be. <sighs> the brothers couldn't unite. That's sad. So that, you told me to do that, right? You told me. Yeah, he told you to do that. That's correct. <laughs> and I don't think there was, <laughs> that was your idea. I don't think there's any draft rules set forth, so I'm going to draft Cam also. <laughs> Yo! <and laughs> there, there's a one goalie rule. No, that's okay because John Starr was actually a, uh, <laughs> yeah, a, a, like a college goalie. So <laughs> that's the secret turtle. <laughs> joke's on you. <laughs> so you actually looks like getting Alan Z and Edge, and then Cam is going over to Turtle's team. Nice. So All right, I win. Right. Let's do it again. <laughs> yeah, let's reset it. That was our practice <laughs> round. Let, let's Wanna go put some money on this. Mm-hmm. Down. 
Bauer will bet you one hundred dollars <laughs> that Bauer's bitch assness wins. And that doesn't include, I'm sure there'll be a couple people that'll be like, oh, I can't make it next Monday, or I got Christmas So stuff, I or. do have a question about that, and who knows, it probably was addressed in the executive office that I haven't uh, checked in yet. Let's say Proctor can't make it. Well, Matt Taylor's already on their team. How do, how do you replace Proctor, or are you just SOL? You plug in the next guy on the all-star list, you get a choice. You're probably calling up Piercy. That's what I was thinking. Oh my god! But then, who are you going to lock up if Proctor's not in the game? Oh, you know, Snipers was probably one of the last men out. Yeah, all the campaigning no. he was doing. <laughs> yeah, so someone else is out. You're probably getting Troy. You're getting Proctor out. Troy. Proctor in. out. Troy in. Upgrade. You know, I think we'll do our best to bring people in. There's still a lot of quality guys um, available. There's a Peso. There's a Troy. A Cuttingham. There's there's a lot of people we can bring in. Maybe it won't be 100 percent fair, but. You know, there's really nothing on the line here. We're not in the you, game. What do we want, care? <laughs> yeah, you want to go through the lineups one more time so we know who's on each team? Uh, Yeah, let me... Uh, Fans at home want to know. Let me try to pull it up. So it looks like Team Crunk has uh, Matt Taylor, Fister, Judge, Chris Taylor, Trent, Shawnee, Rubel, Dave P, Geo. Uh, they got Dylan as their goalie, Matt LaPudre, Alan Z, and Edge. Strong lineup over All right. there. So I'm actually going to give you my lineup right now as I drafted it in my head. Uh, starting center, Pistol Pete. Left wing, Paul Proctor. Obviously, good call. Right wing, Slocum. And then the uh, second line, Andy Fem center, Sugar Sean Hardy left wing, and Serta right wing. And then my D pairing, Star and Ben on the top line, Antioch McShannock on the back line. Wait, are there, how many? How many Th- players? There's are actually there? a couple extra people on oh, each. There's like one extra position on each side that kind of just gives it to. In case <laughs> I was people like, shit, I got three. Out. I got three lines of defense. I yeah, overdrafted there's... my defense. Oh shit! <laughs> and then I'm gonna have Cam play goalie. Uh, wow, I never expected that. Yeah, I mean, and yeah, even with Eric Lapudre as your extra defenseman and. Uh, you know, Brawny, Mechanic, all those guys. You could probably actually put Antioch at a forward depending on who shows up and who does So does it. that adjust for the if guys bail out, are we not going to replace them? I'm going to have assumptions here because I, Drager's running this, is if the goal is pro- hopefully to have 10. If it's under 10, you're going to bring someone in. If you're over 10, you're probably not bringing in the sub unless asked, but that's a total guess on my part. But that's my assumption. Okay, I don't know either. Because, oh, geez. Just think if you ask an all-star to share extra time and not have a clean 10, uh, two lines. Can you yeah. imagine that? I mean, you got, I wouldn't do it. The way this is built out, I mean, you have 13 guys, right? And then the goalie is including one of those 13 guys. So you only have... It runs some lines, yeah. Yeah, you sense. got you got effect, almost three forward lines, two centers, and then like two pairs of D. That's what I was look, thinking of when I was putting Yeah, I think together. there's, an what, an extra, essentially at each position. So you have... Yeah. So how does the middle game work? So we just drafted the All Stars. Is there like a Benders, and then what's ever left over is the middle game, or we? The fu- how does that work? I just want to know. It's where the I'm Monday playing. Night Lights uh, futures future, prospect. Future All Stars. It's the yeah. All Stars of tomorrow and yesterday. The people that are washed up and the people that are up and coming. Pretty much like Peso and Hello. Turtle and and uh, Woodsy probably. Um, yeah, my understanding is we're going to try to set the Benders kind of the later round people, and then anything in the middle, those people will fill in for the other game. And then assuming that not enough people are actually there to fill out that second game, it could be, do you have friends? Do you know, you know, people that are home from college right there? Anybody who can fill in, you have a prospect for Monday Night Lights, bring them in. And realistically, I think the Bender game is at nine o'clock. And then the other two games are at 10 o'clock, according to the schedule that we have. Where realistically, some of those benders could fill in for the uh, All Stars of Tomorrow game as well. So it's not like we're gonna have trouble filling up that second sheet of ice. True, true. So um, I think the big thing will be is who's gonna be those goalies for the Bender game. That's been I, decided already. Is it Skillman? It's and Skillman, Skillman and the Cat Daddy, aka Charles Mackey. I thought Charles retired from goalie. No, he's coming out for the All Star game, as far as I know, or the All Star Bender poll, I should say, as far as I know. Julie the Cat Mackey <laughs> is back. <laughs> but yeah, so those are the all-star teams. I think it'll be a fun time. Remember, 
We announced a skills competition, and if you're interested, uh, send Drager a message if you want to compete in any of those events. We have the all-star side. We have the bender side. And I don't know who wants to get a, together a relay team. It might just be I'm interested in doing the relay, and then maybe we'll put together teams as well. I'm not really sure. I think we should just have a, a foot race where Piercy versus the entire league. So like everybody goes up against Piercy. And we're just doing like suicides to see how fast you actually are against, you know, for example, Proctor, Sugar, myself, etc. That's called the fastest skater competition. Correct, but it's Piercy versus the entire league. Wait, wait. So we can rate Piercy speed. So when Piercy we when we say uh, compete in the fastest skater competition, when Correct. we say okay. foot race, are we talking about actual skating or on feet? Correct. Oh, like, like yeah, it's like skating. So we're gonna put you on the red line. Someone else on the opposite red line. You guys are gonna skate like they do in the NHL. God, good thing I have cardio as well. When's exactly. family night? I would like to see Piercy versus all of the hockey guys' kids. Ethan's going to be there. We'll, <laughs> yo, we'll have a goalie for family night. I don't know if I'm going to be there. <laughs> I'm not, not going to lie. I mean, I guess it's the same night as it's, skills it's, competition, but I might have to run away. His sister <laughs> shows up. Where's Piercy? Where's a trusted voice? Ah. <laughs> uh, Hey, my, my brother-in-law did subscribe to our YouTube channel, which everybody else should, too. Hey. If we can get 100 subscribers, we get a vanity URL. I know Drager's pretty big on that, so uh, you know, make sure you check out the channel, youtube.mnlhl.com. You know, hit subscribe. Maybe watch some videos. I don't know. What's on there? Just us? Uh, we have recaps of the podcast. We have clips of the podcast. Uh, See some drunk goalies. You, you and Ben announcing the finals games is on there as well. So, lots And of I know stuff. that's another part of <laughs> the conspiracy is that everybody wants the Ducks to lose so that we have to broadcast the playoffs, but Ben and I have other things in mind. So You guys are too talented of a broadcast team Don't even try not it. to have Don't you in the it. booth. You're too talented of a defenseman. Didn't you earlier volunteer to broad, broadcast the playoffs? No, that was a skills competition, I thought, skills. or the all-star game. Yeah, we have, you know. How can you both play? broadcast and wear a coach's suit and be behind the bench? It's going to be like a between the glass or like Pierre Maguire, but instead it's with Turtle. Bauer's behind the bench. Bauer, yeah, I just. He I'm drafted a, the crappy team. No, for Bauer. Bauer's going to have to be the guy between the bench because this is your team you drafted. Bauer didn't even show up. No, Bauer told me he was just texting me the whole time. Who did it take? I was going to say, for the, for the playoffs, the we're going to have you and, uh, you and Ben in the booth. And then we're going to have Chad on the other side going to him for special reports as he's talking to the coaches and the players, <laughs> looking for what the adjustments are, saying that is. You know, we're slowly Pierre coming along. Trust, trusted voice. This is uh, Pierre Polinsky here between the glass. And uh, I'm reporting and just let you know that Star has officially thrown up in the beginning <laughs> of the second period. All right, back to you in the studio. Uh, yeah. Going over to Chad real quick. Uh, the Americans, I'm seeing uh, Star's head down. What's going on over there? <laughs> Gives you the 411. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Ty, or... You know, Whoop Auto, he hasn't jumped over the bench all night. What's going on with his health and wellness? You know, he's giving off too many sparks. <laughs> <laughs> Smoke. Smoke and sparks. But, uh, yeah, that's pretty much what I have tonight. Does anybody have anything else or any subjects they want to cover? Did you guys cover referees? Dude, you're in my mind. I actually had, probably not what you're thinking of, okay. but I have referee... Related comments, but please oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, 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 you I go need first. you to go. I know no, you want to close it up. You brought it up. Let's, let's okay, get into this. Up. All right, real talk. Like, I know I said this maybe like eight weeks ago, like two months ago. I'm like, you know what? You know, referees, you don't want to bag on anything else, blah, blah, blah. Bro, there's no, like, we, the, the Ivory Tower needs to take a serious look next season at who we hire for referees and or what are we doing. Because the consistency from week to week is that there is no consistency at all. That's a consistency. Actually, I lied. There's been one consistent call that makes no sense. It's goalies covering the puck with momentum out of the crease. <laughs> was, that's the only was, thing that's been consistent. For example, last night, they missed a high sticking on Doc Ho uh, Hollywood in our, uh, in our game in the Nordiques. Uh, I think Suki got in the back of the head. And then I was skating down on the other end. Dougie goes, oh, there's going to be karma happening. You're right. It was karma. I got high stick in the neck by Ty. And then there was an icing. They call icing all the way down two feet to the red line. They wave it off. There's a too many men, people, uh, six people on the ice. You don't have to make a play on the puck, but if you interfere with trying to gain possession, it's a penalty. I saw a game in, I saw a, a call for the Whalers where uh, Troy, um, was, you know, it was Whalers Ducks. Troy, it was two minutes left in the game. Uh, Troy throws a poke check on somebody in. On Dave P. And on he Dave stumbled P. up a little bit, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I wouldn't really call that a penalty per se, but I mean, I guess I could see it there. Yeah. I saw an offsides call, well, actually twice. One, Pete got called for offsides because he's wearing a green jersey. But got, the, the offsides call was on our team. 
the the Deeks, which <laughs> didn't make any sense at all. How can you be offsides when you're on the other team? Okay, anyways, and there was one in there was one in the Seals Americans game too, where uh, someone got called for offsides and it was the wrong person. So I, I just like a, I guess they should take a bigger look, hopefully going forward, and or somehow get some consistency in what we're calling and not calling going forward. That would be very helpful. Yeah, this was brought up last week. I think about the consistency thing where I had the penalty, and I felt like there was others that were very thing where I thought it was a weak call. But as long as you're consistent, it's fine. Um, I actually thought the Riley call was the right call. He kind of dove out there. He knew he was on the puck. He tried to act like he wasn't. I actually would say the Troy call was more of a BS call than the Riley call. Even though Troy ran to the bench and acted like he didn't know what he did, he obviously knew he got a penalty. So I found that to be very humorous. But what was your take on the refs? So I will say overall, I... I typically, if I have a good idea, I try not to bring it up because I know that just puts more work on Panny or Troy or whoever. I mean, you so could I will run say with the idea. that it's exactly. So I don't want to do that. So I just keep to myself. So the fact that Hedis <laughs> nominated himself as the referee commissioner for next year was super generous of him. Oh sweet! I tried to take the test. I ran out of tests <laughs> in December. I took the oh I took the test and take the class. Crunk was there. I was, and he's like, "I have a seat for you, Hedis. Where are you?" I'm like, "I couldn't make it." <laughs> so my. My take on the referee situation was purely from last night's game where there was a call, maybe it was trip. Oh, no, it was the, the goalie. I've only seen that twice, and it was back-to-back this week. So I actually don't know what the rule is, um, but when the goalie frees it outside of the crease. He was way outside. And he was, crease. but I guess I don't know what like what else is he supposed to do, stand up and say, here you go, and then try and like flop back well, to, it's the, not to the net. The, it's because it was behind the crease. Right? Be, yeah, but by the same token, like you can't blow you. You're gonna get you if you're gonna give someone a penalty for that. There's multiple options. First, like you never hear a loose, right? Like the puck is loose next to a goalie. A great example was the other day, like little Joe called, uh, blew the whistle dead. Um, again, American Seals game where uh, the Seals got a shot. The puck laid to the right of, of J Flo, and he's in the golden triangle in the right corner. But the puck is on J Flo's right uh, right side of his body. So all little Joe can see is J Flo and a butterfly. So he's like, I'm blowing the whistle. I'm assuming it's covered. I can't see it. Meanwhile, like if you would have waited another second, Fister or one of the Americans, it was like a 50 50 puck battle. Someone would have gotten that puck on J Flo's right side. It could have gone in the net or it would have gone to the corner, but early whistle. So I just, it'd been nice to see a little more, a little more consistency. Nice to see, like like you're saying, like a nice, I don't know, like if, if we're like Monday Night Lights, you mean Monday Night like guys are referees and we're just being hypercritical about it, but I so feel like there's a lot we, of. The guys that aren't in Monday Night Lights, do we pay them? We do. Correct. I think we actually pay the guys who are in MNL. We give we, them a small. We fee pay as them well. as well. Okay, so I totally didn't know that. So the I the one and only game I ever refed. I'm on the Leblet Boo uh, party deck afterwards, and uh, Dragger goes, "What's your Venmo?" And I'm like, "Why?" And he goes, "For refing." I'm like, "Oh, sweet. <laughs> I had no fucking clue I was getting paid." So even with that said, the fact that they get paid, my opinion is. More often than that, keep it safe. That That's my only thing. As long as you're not letting it get out of hand. If you make bad calls, if you make offsides, miss offsides, all that type of stuff. My take from last night was that I was on a in a game on a team that has one, two, three, four, four refs on the Ducks, three or four, and the Whalers have at least three or four, plus the two refs. So we had like six or seven or maybe even eight MNL refs on the ice, a part of that game. And the people that raised the most hell about referee calls were other referees that were in the middle of the game. So I think just the hypocrisy of these referees, knowing how difficult it can be, especially that we all know each other, what do you let go, what do you you know call... Are they being serious? Are they about to fight or not? And then just verbally abusing your brother when he makes a bad offsides call when obviously he's just doing it because we asked him to. Um, that would be my take is I think the refs, when they're not refing, the way that they yell at their their brotherhood of refs is just beyond <laughs> insane to me that I would just not put up with that. I can totally agree with that. I mean, last week, I talked about it on the podcast. I just kind of briefly mentioned it here. I didn't agree with the call I got called for, but at the same time, is I'm not yelling at the ref to say, that's bullshit, that's fucking... I go into the penalty box. Did I yell about it in the penalty box? Yeah. yeah. I didn't yell about it to the ref. I complained about it afterwards, but don't give the ref shit there. One of the other things I didn't like, and I forget if it was after the first or the second period, I thought the game overall was 
fine majority of the time refing was Ty came up to us. He's like, I'm going to start calling the Tiki Tack stuff. Just wanted to give you a warning there. It's like, he came up to us too. Yeah. But, he did come up and say that to us. But part of it's like, you should have either been calling it or you're not calling it. Like, I didn't think, to me, I didn't notice a lot of Tiki Tack stuff that I thought should have been. I think been that's called. pretty no, good that he did that. Fair, I mean, that's yeah. one saying it's calling it consistent, basically saying, I have been letting this shit go, like for the first period. And he came up to us and basically saying, "I'm now not going to." And he said it to both of us. I didn't know that he came up to you guys too. That's I, about I as just fair don't. As fair I just don't be. like the refs. My personal opinion is, I don't like them calling the ticky tax stuff. I feel like we should know each other good enough. We right. should have a respect enough for another enough people where ticky tax stuff isn't going to lead to a bigger incident. So you can actually give more benefit of the doubt on ticky tax stuff. I think what he was leading to is that he saw it escalating beyond like one elbow to another elbow. And then it starts to get worse. So he's like, all right, we we've gone far enough. Let's, let's tone it down. I mean, you guys have obviously lost the game, even though we're just starting the third period. (laughs) So let's just put it on cruise control. Everyone go out to the party deck. I like that. I mean, if he th- if he thinks it's escalating, <laughs> that that's another Here's thing. As far as us losing the I game going to the third you. period, yeah, no, you <laughs> you're you're a natural here. You're, I'm gonna have to start bugging you to come in more often. Three minutes away, I I'm know, gonna ride my you, bike over here when it gets warm. Oh, you a doggy both, huh? Oh yeah, yeah health health and, health and wellness over here. So uh, yeah, apparently little Joey Ref he wants to come in sometime to the podcast. Apparently he's a Clausen guy as well. So. No, he he uh, he's not allowed. Our our refs are allowed to suck. He's awful. He can't come here. <laughs> <laughs> and we have one less listener. Now. <laughs> I'm going to introduce a new executive producer of the. That Monday was Life Crunk that said that, by the way, Turtle Joe. Tim. Crunk said that. <laughs> but uh, yeah. So I think that was a good subject. Any other thoughts on the refs? I would uh, like I said, uh, just going forward. If if you're communicating and you're making calls consistent, consistently or you're saying what you're going to do and you actively do it, that's fine. I just, if you're in the right position and you're making, you know, if it's a high stick, it's a high stick. Like, just don't let something go to let it go. Like, I know sometimes they'll say, oh, I didn't see it, or I didn't see this, or they come back afterwards. I don't have an issue with it, but my biggest issue, I mean, the biggest one was, I mean, there was a couple last night, but the most glaring one was that one ice, ice, icing call at the end of the Deeks, Deeks-Ducks game. There's 30 seconds left. Dougie's busting his ass. You go, you go three lines, and you yell ice, 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 and then he gets four feet below before the red line, and you're like, no ice. You wave it off. Just ten seconds left, like just because you want to get out of the game. Come on, guys, Look, we're a little bit better than that, right? And then, I mean, another thing too is like, if a goalie, I, I didn't get a chance to touch on this. Uh, I kind of talked myself out of it, but if the goalie's coming the puck out of the crease, and then like the whistle blows, you give him a penalty. You're not even giving him a chance to play the puck, like. When I was behind the net with the puck and like Ty was open, I immediately passed the puck as the whistle was blown, and then Sugar's like, "Hey, where's the penalty?" And then you got a penalty out of it. But if you're like, I shouldn't be covering the puck behind the net, you know, just vocalize it to me, be like, "Hey, like loose, like puck's loose, like if it's next to J Flow, it's loose," or like, "Hey, play the puck, play the puck," like just communicate more, so then we know what's going on and what you want from us and what's like what's legal, what's not legal. I mean, you don't have to be quiet all the time necessarily. Yeah, yeah, I think consistency is the key there, and I think it's not only for the game you're playing, but it would be nice to try to get stuff closer between games. So it's not that first period you're guessing what's going on, how are the refs going to call this game. If you can kind of get a feeling of how they're going to call it all year, I think that would be nice. But I think that's also asking a lot, and it's probably not realistic because, you know, we have our two normal refs that are, I'm assuming, pretty experienced guys. We have other guys, uh, you know, Peso, Trent, uh, Ty's actually repped a lot as well. You know, Crunk, he's done his one time coming in. Busta's still Ruble. fairly new. Ruble. Ruble's repped a ton. Everyone's got their styles, and it's hard to have everybody kind of line up as well. But it is tough sometimes as a player when you are you get called for those ones, and you're just like, what the heck's going on? But if you're communicating. Yeah. I will say that for the players that don't like it, feel free to uh, go out and get yourself certified and become a ref. So that way... Uh, you know, I, I'm talking. Don't I'm don't talk- bitch don't bitch about the president if you don't vote. That's all I'm saying. Exactly. Yeah, I'm talking a lot of shit, but I actually I tried to, to do that refereeing thing. 100%. I tried. I tried, but then I like, tried, but I overslept uh, and didn't yeah, come. yeah. That's actually what it was. That's literally what happened. It's had a drill weekend. I just like I fucked it up, and I was like, I guess I'm not coming this weekend. Whatever. <laughs> so you can sign up for the class, not go to it, and then take the test. Yeah, you. Well, you, that's the thing. Is you sign up for the class, you take the test, and then you're supposed to go into the class. But like, you're not. You don't get like the certification until you take like the in. Like the in course on ice thing because they want to make sure you know you can stand up. I had to prove up. that I could skate backwards. Yeah, 
It's like the parallel Dave, parking Dave of hockey. P, Dave P, yeah. Dave, P is, <laughs> Dave P's like, you could show up for like an hour ahead of us and they'll just like say it's okay, even though it's like a five-hour class. I'm like, oh, okay. Well, if I would have known that, I still would have like came. So I, was like, I was like only over stuff. Yeah, like I would take too. Dave P's word. 100%. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm here for the class. That was three hours ago, but Dave P said I... Oh, okay, you're good. <laughs> Dave, Dave P and Pace are the most unstoppable force in MNL. Oh, Just yeah. take their word on it, right? <laughs> I'll take Ruble's word on it. Yeah, Dave P is maybe not as much. So we don't have any games for two weeks? Lies, Monday. Nope. Ne- well, next week we do have the All-Star game. Oh, I mean, the like Bowl. league games? No official games for the next two weeks. The Whalers actually have... Uh, the week off as well there. So they have three weeks, which sucks when you lose a game going into that long of a break. Yeah, so. you got to think about it for almost a month. You yeah. That we get, yeah. We get to stew that over it, think about what could go wrong, <laughs> how I'm I'm horrible, and I hate myself. I wish there was a more longer trade deadline. Yeah, so, well, happy, uh, happy holidays, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year to whoever doesn't make it out to... The next two weeks. Don't forget, Crow, we have the Christmas Eve podcast starring apparently me, Proctor, Charles Mackey, maybe Hedis, Dougie, and uh, Sammy, Sammy as well. Sammy Bear. So free breakfast will be provided. I think uh, Charles and Proctor are bringing mimosas for everybody. So uh, good times for all. Uh, but yeah, anybody else have any subjects? Uh, no, my last word, though, is to <laughs> Troy because Troy goes in the comment bar. Pettis, does uh, Doc Hollywood still suck? My response to you, Troy, is, uh, Troy, do you still manipulate words? Show me the receipts where I said that Doc Holliday sucks. I never said he sucked. I just said I didn't think he was a first-round talent. We'll find out if he's a first-round talent when he plays against the Tigers. And it was actually me because he was wearing my jersey. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, you've you've stepped up your game a lot for the North Stars as of late, so uh, we all appreciate that, but... uh, as always, give us a call, 714-75-WHOOP. Email the show, sub, subscribe, all that other jazz. But uh, it was a pleasure to have Crunk and Turtle in for the first time. As uh, Hopefully Happy we'll see here. you guys again. Never. Pettis, you were late, but you made it in. So, uh, yeah. We I'm just are just out of curiosity.